What am I watching a Peter McKinnon video? No, but I got a new mic. Let's take a look. News from the booth. Welcome back to the voiceover village. I'm Rick McIver, your village idiot and man who has been waiting patiently for this day. You see, I ordered this microphone probably about six months ago and there's been delays in shipping or whatever the problem was. Sweetwater didn't have it in stock and it took forever to get it. However, now I have my grubby little mitts on it and I wanna take it for a spin. And just to be clear, I bought this with my own money, so it's mine and my opinions, not theirs. I'm gonna need to have a garage sale or something soon. I have too many microphones. Maybe I should give some away. Hmm. This is not an unboxing video. However, let's take a quick look together to see what's in here. Instructions, a cable, a stand, Ugh. pretty hefty shock mount, a hard mount, and then this guy. Ooh, it's heavier than it looks. It's giving off some serious AT2020 vibes right there. 512 Audio is created by the guy who started Warm Audio, and Warm Microphones have gotten a lot of great reviews. They're good mics. 512 is their creator line. Bryce Young let this slip at the NAM 2020. Here, let me show you this clip real quick. We thought, hey, let's let's bring that expertise to the the I don't want to say newbie or new person, but you know, somebody that's maybe just starting out or just getting into content creation. So 512 Audio is kind of like the entry level gear for a creator, kind of like the Squire to the Fender or the Epiphone to the Gibson or the Penelope Cruz to Selma Hayek. You know it's true. The included stand is a little jinky, but what it's really good at, look how high this microphone is. Off my desk, this microphone is almost right at mouth level, which is where you want it to be. A lot of USB microphones for creators, their stand comes in like this little SE Electronics here. It's up, but it's not up enough actually to be useful and close to my mouth. Even though the stand kind of feels like an afterthought, it's really good at getting it up and near my mouth. So points for that. So I put this in the shock mount because I wanted to show you that it's in the shock mount, it's about the same height as the Neom. So when you use the shock mount, you're really gonna have to use it on a boom arm. Here's the other thing I wanted to show you. You can't use the shock mount with the stand because it tips over super easy. I had to super have it balanced. Okay, now we're back on the hard mount and what that does is it elevates it higher to my mouth. Uh, it's the center of gravity is over the middle of the actual tripod kind of desk stand here. So if you're gonna use the desk stand, you're gonna to have to use the hard mount. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for a mic with a good shock mount, this may or may not be it. But we're gonna do all the mic tests here in a second. So stay with me. Oh, yes, here we are. We're in the booth. That must mean it's testing time. And we're gonna do the tests that we always do for these microphones, starting with the tap test. The Tempest has a little shock mount, and when you put it in the boom arm, it works quite well. Not bad, actually. Not bad at all. This boom arm is a little ringy, so I'd expect it to actually ring a little bit. Nothing. Awesome. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. Pizza is perfect with pineapple on top pizza is perfect with pineapple on top. I'm actually really impressed because that's a huge diaphragm and you can pretty much see right through the mesh and it doesn't plosive all that much. Still worth a pop filter though. Turn it back. And so here I am talking directly into the front of the microphone. This is straight into the capsule. Let's turn it 90 degrees. Oh wait, I have to unplug my headphones to do that. <laughs> okay, let's turn it 90 degrees. Here is a 90 degrees uh, off axis rejection, a little over a fist away. Now we're right behind it, same place, back to this 90 degrees over here. Now this is right in front again. So the front of the 512, you have a mute button, you have a mic level, and you have a headphone level. The knobs are kind of weak. They're really, really delicate. It feels like if I turned it the wrong way, a little too much, grabbed it just the wrong way, they would break right off, which is a heck of a surprise because this microphone, actually all metal, feels really solid, except for that. Very strange. Let's test the mute button and see if there's an audible click. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, six, one, two, three. 
0.56. The little light does come on when you mute it, but you kind of have to make sure you push it real hard because if you sort of push it like that, it doesn't actually work. You really got to get in there and click it and make sure that the light comes on. Hmm. Now this is a cardioid pickup pattern, which means I have a little freedom to move left to right without having too much drop off. So that's something to note. It does have a USB-C connector here, so you wanna keep that in mind if it's important to you. Um, and here's a funny little feature that seems to be happening on all the USB mics these days. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it. The microphone has a little LED in it. I think mine might be a little bit broken because it's not really a circle. It's just kind of that wire that connects to the diaphragm. I think the circle is supposed to be more lit up. It's okay, I guess, if, they, if you're into that kind of thing. Not really my cup of tea, but, you know, hey, everybody does their own thing. So, cool, man. So now it's time to go head-to-head. -head. Our first contender, the Neom. The first microphone that I'm going to put up against the Tempest is the SE Electronics Neom. This is their only USB mic currently. Uh, they had one a long time ago, but they don't make it anymore. The Neom is a very fun little microphone. I reviewed it a while back. I'll put the link up here, over here. I'll put the link up there somewhere. Anyway, this is a great little microphone. I like it a lot. Um, it works well with iOS devices. Uh, it has a lot of functionality. Um, you have, in addition to a ton of gain, in fact, the gain on this goes to 11. Haha, <laughs> funny, funny. You have two knobs that'll actually help with your headphone mix. Uh, you can have an, adjust your microphone in your headphones and you can adjust the feed coming from your computer. Kind of nice if you're on a call or if you're on a podcast with somebody. See, it pops really easy. If you're on a podcast with somebody and you want to kind of adjust those levels, this is a really easy way to do it. It also has a really nice little indicator ring light on the front. It's green when your levels are good and it goes red when you're a little bit hot and you need to calm down a little bit. So actually my levels are a little bit hot. So I'm gonna just adjust that just a touch. It does not have a shock mount. It has this weird little clip system. So it does pick up a lot. See how that rings? See when I told you it rings? It does ring. The shock mount on the Tempest uh, is phenomenal. It works really, really well. This doesn't have a shock mount, so it's going to pick up every little handling noise, every little tap on the desk that you make. So that's a downside for it. But overall, this is how it sounds. It has a fairly nice proximity effect, but if you get away a little bit, it doesn't lose too much. It's a very bitey, very bright, articulate. It has a crunch to it. It's really a modern sounding microphone. That forward, that high mid forward, that articulate sound, that is really popular these days. So this is the Neom. Let's go back to the Tempest. Warm Audio, which is the parent company for 512, has been around since 2011, and they've put out some pretty good microphones. However, 512, or 512, whatever you want to call it, has only been around less than a year. And as far as microphones go, this is their first USB microphone. I wonder if it's the studio quality they say it is. I would definitely put this microphone uh, right up next to the Neom as its main competitor. For $160 for a USB microphone, there aren't any other mics that have a 34 millimeter capsule. There just aren't. So this one stands out and is fairly unique as a USB microphone. Studio quality, yet to be seen. Speaking of studio quality, I want to try out an actual studio quality microphone with a similar size diaphragm. What I have in front of me now, this is the King B2. And the reason that I'm using this microphone to compare against the Tempest, they have the same size capsule, 34 millimeters. They also both cost about the same, $160. 
but with the King B, you need some sort of mic stand, uh, you need an XLR cable, and most importantly, you need an interface that can supply phantom power. With the Tempest, all those things are included. Now the King B is an XLR condenser microphone, which means it's gonna be very sensitive to the environment around it. Um, it comes with its own little pop filter here, which is nice. And you kind of need that pop filter because this one is really sensitive to plosives. But it seemed like the Tempest was not as sensitive. I wonder how they sound tonally back to back. So when you're making your decision about which microphone to buy, take into account that yes, these cost the same up front. However, you do have to have the interface and the cable and all the other stuff that goes with it. So it's gonna be a little bit more expensive. So that was the King B2 and now we're back on the Tempest. And I would just like to take a moment and thank all of these microphone companies that are actually naming their microphones. Not just random numbers and letters that don't mean anything. This is the Tempest. We have the Neom. We have the King B. It's so much easier for someone like me who has ADHD to remember those kinds of things. <laughs> letters and numbers, I go, uh, what? So thank you so much, microphone companies. I really appreciate it. One more thing I want to add before I go back and start editing all this footage together is the compatibility with an iOS device. The Neom, totally compatible with an iPhone. This is not. When you plug it in, it says this requires too much power. The iPhone cannot provide it. Same is true with the iPad. Now, I have an older iPad that's a couple years old, so the newer ones, that might be different. But for the devices that I have, this does not work. So now I'm going to go edit. I'm going to edit and listen and listen and edit and edit and listen until I can come up with a decision. And I'll be back with some recommendations right after this. Boy, that got weird real fast. Huh. It's been a few days. I've finished editing. I've used this mic off and on for different things. Here are my thoughts. The Tempest is a solid microphone. It has good tone. It's not too bitey. It's not too dark. The cardioid pickup pattern is nice. The uh, off-axis rejection is pretty good. After listening for a while, it does pick up a lot of plosives. It doesn't surprise me. Use a pop filter, you'll be fine. I think the sound is a little pulled back when you compare it to the Neom. The Neom is a little more aggressive. This one is a little bit more reserved. And so for spoken word, for long-term spoken word, this might be a better choice than the Neom. If you're trying to do promo work or something that needs that bitey modern sound, then I'd go with the Neom. The King B was better than both of them, actually. It's a really good microphone. The thing is, it's really hard to rank these microphones because you would kind of use them for different things. But if I had to give it a number, I would probably give it an eight out of 10, but the little delicate knobs, that knocks off a point. So I'm gonna go with a seven out of 10 for the new Tempest from 512 Audio. But you listen to it. Tell me what you thought. Leave me a comment below. That would be great. Thanks for watching, and I hope it was helpful. If it was, please leave me a like. That would be great so other people can see this video as well. If you want to watch some more videos with microphone reviews, I'll put some up here. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.